Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. This video covers one of the past HC exam questions from the Regulating Substances chapter. While doing the seconds, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. And once I've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play, and I'll cover the actual answer itself. So this question says, the diagram shows a representation of a mammalian renephron. And this is a diagram, we have A, A, B and C. Question A. Filtration happens at A. Here. Name two blood components that remain in the blood after filtration. That's with one mark. B. Most reabsorption happens at B. So that's here. Explain why both passive and active transport are needed for this process to occur. And that's with two marks. And C. ADH, antidiuretic hormone, acts at C. So here. Outline the role of ADH in regulating water balance. That's worth two marks. When you're ready, press pause and then attempt the question. And then press play when you're ready to go for the go for the answer. Welcome back. For the first one, it's relatively straightforward. So filtration happens at A, so at this, which happens to be the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. So A is the Bowman's capsule. You don't have to label that, I'm just telling you. A is the Bowman's capsule. So filtration happens here. And name two blood components that remain in the blood after filtration. Remember, that, that was because they were too big, so you have to name two of them. And you don't have to say why, but I just wrote why that happens as well. But you have to name two components. And I mentioned the red blood cells and the white blood cells. Name two components. So... What I wrote is red and white blood cells, this is the naming, red and white blood cells are too big to fit through the fil filter at the Bowman's capsule and do not enter the nephron. So the, this part here was just, you probably didn't have to write that because it says name, but I wrote it anyway just because I want to finish the sentence. And you can use that as a bit of revision as well. So we have small things passing through that filter, but the big things can't fit. So if you wrote write that, you get one mark, so a half mark for red and half a mark for white blood cells. B, most reabsorption happens at B. Explain why both passive and active transport are needed for this process to occur. So the action verb itself is explain. So we need to give a bit more detail, obviously, and we need to know why exactly we need to have both of these. And we need to know have both passive and active transport. So what you do first is you can write about what, what passive and active transport do and where they occur as well. So in this case I talk about osmosis and filtration and active transport I talk about the reabsorption of amino acids and glucose and then you also need to explain why obviously why we need to have both, why one wouldn't be enough, why we need both as well, why we need both. And if you do that you get your two marks. So what I wrote is Filtration and osmosis, so filtration and osmosis are both passive forms of transport. So I mentioned what our passive forms of transport are for this part, which occurs at A and B, filtration osmosis. And this makes sure that water is reabsorbed, so osmosis makes sure that water is reabsorbed. And filtration makes sure that small particles are filtered out of the blood and actually enter the Bowman's capsule. And then from there they go into the distal and proximal tubule. So here we've gone through what passive amp transport does. Helps us to put water back into our body and also it helps us to make sure that all the small things such as urea leave the actual blood and go into the nephron. But the problem was that the process of filtration is however not specific enough. So anything that's small enough will fit through. It's not specific enough. And we need active transport in addition to passive transport. So we need active transport, make sure that nutrients such as glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed back into the blood against a gradient. So this wouldn't happen for diffusion because diffusion only works from a 
high concentration and then moves them to high concentration, low concentration. And if it goes against the gradient, the gradient that means it's a low concentration to high concentration. So this is the opposite of diffusion. So we need to have active transport to make sure that we get all the good stuff, glucose amino acids, back into our blood, from our nephrons back into blood. And that wouldn't occur if we only had passive transport because diffusion itself won't make that happen. And osmosis only deals with water itself. And then for C, ADH or antidiuretic hormone acts at location C. So that was your little collecting duct. Outline the role of ADH in regulating water balance. And that's sort of two marks. So for this, you need to know, you, should, you could mention where is ADH produced? So ADH produced, where is that produced? You should also mention when it's released. So what conditions it's released? And then obviously what it does. So what it does. If you can't read my writing, that's okay. I'll go over this in terms of just saying it out loud as well. So what I wrote, and I'm gonna go scroll down a bit, is ADH is produced by the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus, which is the part of the brain that deals with quite a few regulating things, and they produce ADH, and it's stored by the pituitary gland. It's more of just an introduction. Um, it is then released when the body water levels are too low. So that's when it's released. So I said you should also write when it's released. So it's released when the body levels, body water levels are too low. For example, this is the example when sweating excessively. So when we sweat a lot, we lose a lot of water. And then we still have to mention other things. We have to mention what it does. So ADH, this is the what it does part. ADH acts on the collecting duct. And I just wrote C in commas to show them that collecting duct is actually C. And makes the collecting ducts more permeable to water loss. So this means that the actual water can flow from the collecting ducts back into the body. And if it were to stay in the collecting ducts, it would be removed in the urine. And this causes water to be reabsorbed back into the body. So this prevents further water loss. So that's what ADH does. And using words like permeable is just good because it's scientific words that make it the whole question, the whole answer seem more scientific. Now, I also wrote ADH stops being released from the pituitary gland once normal water levels have been restored. So ADH is only released if we're low on water. Once everything's back to normal, because all this is homeostasis, osmoregulation, once everything is back, is back to normal, ADH, which was the response, is shut, out, shut down again, and it stops being produced. So you get marks. This was worth two marks, and the first question was also worth two marks. So we explained what filtration and osmosis does and what active transport does. And you've said why we need both of them in that question. You get two marks. So for saying what they do and for saying why we need both of them, you get a mark each. So that's two out of two for this one. And for the bottom one, if you mention the steps, so if you say um, when it's released and what it does, you get two marks out of two as well for this one. So when it's released is when we have low water levels, and what it does, it reabsorbs water back into our body. So where do these questions come from? They come from these dot points. Outline the role of the hormone aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. So we just outline the role of the antidiuretic hormone in this question. I don't know why it's not letting me write. Uh, the antidiuretic hormone in regulating water and salt levels. But for ADH, it's only to do with water levels. So this, this is question C comes from this one. And then question B comes from this one. Explain how the process of filtration and reabsorption in the mammalian kidney help regulate body fluid composition. There was actually, again, another one that didn't pop up. There was one here. For whatever reason, it didn't pop up. And this one was the dot point which talked about how why we need both passive and active transport. And the diffusion osmosis is not enough to actually regulate body fluid compositions. And that was question B, because question B is basically goes through that as well. So there are three dot points which cover these three questions. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.